Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holder, and as always, welcome to the channel. Today it's all about turbo -y goodness. That's right, RichardHolderPerformance.com. We did a whole bunch of turbo testing. We tested seven or eight different turbos, and what I was looking for is, now you know from this channel, I always recommend the GT45 Turbo up to about 700 or 750 horsepower. It's inexpensive, it's readily available, and I always recommend that. The problem with the GT45 is just not very responsive. Yeah, it'll make 700, 750 horsepower without too much problem, but it's not very responsive. It's an older turbo design, and I wanted to offer something that was better on both sides of that GT45. I wanted something that was a lot more responsive, very easy with a smaller turbo, but I didn't want to sacrifice any of the peak power potential, and if I could, make something that made even more power than the GT45 and was a lot more responsive. Did we get there? Yes, we did. Let's check it out. the drain line. So this is the smallest of the turbos that we're going to run. Typical insulation though. Better Y pipe, better adapter, 3 inch V band T4. That way we can run all these different turbos. And then we've got to hook up our feed line. Be good to go. Hook up the intercooler. So this one's running the three inch exhaust on it. Got a B band. Got a row two sensor. So we throw the tune on it. Where is the um, we've got our oil feed? Mm -hmm. We've got compressor housing all lined up. A tight little turbo, but it's chock full ability goodness, though. That's right. All right, intercooler time. All right. up. You ready? Clappy. Ready for clampy. I saw Jed clamp it. Yeah. Got water feeding the intercooler.
Okay guys, let's take a look at the results of our turbo testing. This is part one. We're taking a look at the smaller of the two turbos. This is a specialized version that we use of a GTX 3584 turbo. And what I wanted was something that was both much more responsive than the GT45 and also would make as much or more power than the GT45. So after testing lots and lots of turbos, we finally found something that would give us exactly that. Our test motor, 5.3 liter, our aluminum L33 that now has over 650 plus dyno poles on it, but is still working great. We equipped it for this test with our own low buck truck camshaft since we're testing basically what I think is the low buck truck turbo version. And we ran this thing with a low buck truck camshaft. We had the BTR springs in it. And then we also had a Trailblazer SS in place of the original early truck manifold that came with this thing. So running this matter with long tube headers and our Holly management system, Mazir electric water pump, the way that we run it on the engine dyno. And we ran this thing also on E85 with our 1,000cc FIC injectors. This thing produced 439.5 horsepower and 423.5 foot-pounds of torque. This is naturally aspirated. Here's what happened after we added our single turbo setup. So this was a low boost version. Actually, the boost rose from about seven and a half pounds up to nine at the peak. And you could see it made a ton of power. Not surprising, 638 horsepower and 636 foot pounds of torque. So did very well. We're going to go up and boost quite a bit. We'll take a look at the results of all of that. Our turbo system was the turbo setup that I normally use for dyno testing. Stock truck manifolds facing forward. We had our own custom some Y pipe that Jason over at JT Fab did. We had two Turbo Smart waste gates on it, two 45 millimeter Turbo Smart waste gates. We had the three inch V band to T4 turbo. We had our own GTX 3584 turbo. We had an air and water intercooler just with dyno water running through it. And then we had the blow off valve and a, a three inch exhaust. So we'd run different exhausts on this, which I'll be showing you the results of stepping up in the exhaust side. So if you wanna make lots of power, a bigger exhaust obviously is a good idea. But here's what happened when we stepped up and boost on this thing. And again, we're running E85. This thing was run with 20 degrees of total timing all the way through these different boost ranges. On the load in, we had less timing. I'm gonna go ahead and post the timing curve up here so you guys can see it. I'll show you a picture of what we used actually when we ran the test. You could see big block of 20 degrees of timing. I just didn't wanna play with different timing even though we ran different boost levels. So this was at about nine pounds. And then here's what happened when we went up and boost. It did exactly what you'd expect. You know, lots more power through the whole curve. So stepping up and boost, nice little railroad tracks. You can kind of take a look here. What I wanted to do on this particular test is we wanted to get up past where we had run with the GT45 turbo in the past. So I wanted to push this thing over 800 horsepower, which we did. And it, it pretty easily did that, 801. Nailed it. And then 801 horsepower and 845 foot-pounds of torque. You can see even down here at, at 3,500, we had full boost. We had 202 kPa on this high run. This was this was at uh, you know one bar of boost. It had 753 foot-pounds of torque. And although an engine dyno isn't the ideal place to determine like the response rate of a turbo because, you know, we have kind of an artificial load, I can tell you this. We did lots of testing to test response rate on this particular turbo and on all the turbos that we tested. And one way to measure that was to do a roll-in test. So as we were rolling in, we were logging this to see where this thing started making boost. And on this particular turbo chosen for its response rate, this thing started making boost at just 22% TPS. So when you were rolling into the throttle, basically, we had we started to have boost and we had full boost by 34 or 35% TPS. So way before the thing was even halfway open, we're already building boost. And this thing was building boost at very, very low RPM. So what would happen in a vehicle is if you match the throttle 
even down at the converter at 2000 RPM or 2500 RPM, you're going to have boost. In fact, I'd be surprised if you didn't have all the boost. That's how responsive this turbo is, yet it also has the ability to make over 800. In fact, this turbo is rated for way more than this. It was rated for 900 plus horsepower. I don't know if it will do that on this particular 5.3 but it makes lots of power and it's very, very responsive. This is basically, like I said, this is the low buck truck of the turbo world. I'm Richard Holder. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I'll keep testing.